Having successfully launched three businesses, Bilingual Mum to Two and entrepreneur Antonia Bovazan Brown has connected with thousands of people, both French and international, since moving to the French Riviera. These connections allow her to speak to successful local businesses and inspirational people about life here on the Côte d'Azur and share it with you. Welcome to the Riviera Firefly podcast with your host, entrepreneur and my mum, Antonia Bovazan Brown. Hello Fireflies, I have been recharging my batteries. I was chatting to Kate Threadgold the other day about self-care. It was a really interesting, positive, motivating conversation, as so many of them with her are. And we sort of basically agreed that self-care can be anything from a lovely long massage to picking up the phone and having a chat with a friend, a lovely bath with scented candles or a really good read. It can mean anything. And a word I've heard banded about in England is the adult soft play. So soft play being the place that you might take kids to, uh, we need it too. Not because you are doing something for your business, but just because it's got no purpose, something for fun. Well, how do you do it? Well, number one, I've got an amazing team that helped me. So I have been outsourcing lots and lots of work. It was the only way that I could do more. And that was great for the team as well. So I was giving them new responsibilities, different challenges, and this freed up my time. I've been trying not to work too much on a Monday and a Friday afternoon or over the weekend. Obviously, I do check messages because we do have clients contacting us all the time and I don't want to get too far behind. But I do try to time box things. And so maybe I'll spend an hour doing emails and then I might switch to a bit of marketing time. And I focus on that with no disruptions. Working from home works really well for me, actually, because I can put on a wash and then get on and do some finance or some VAT, TVA returns. What I was finding, though, was that the downtime, so those Monday afternoons, those Friday afternoons, weren't being used that well. And I wasn't really making use of all this spare time that I had. So it was time to focus on the soft play. One thing I did was I went to see the doctor and had her look at my diet, make sure that everything was in order, all the vitamins, minerals and everything like that. So we've done a few tweaks and that's going to be great for the summer. Getting out in the sunshine, well, we haven't had that much, unfortunately, recently. So when it is sunny, getting out there, I suppose you can go out when it's raining too. It is fantastic living here on the Côte d'Azur, going for walks. And I've been able to tick off some of those places that have been mentioned by guests over previous podcasts. I've also been to a couple of escape rooms. Who knew? I love escape rooms. This is uh, part of something that I set up a while back with uh, a few ladies, really, uh, sort of like a me club while we're rebranding it as our culture club. So we could be doing something like knitting or just some R&R going to a concert. Um, I'm actually going to Lizzie Parks's rare concert that she's doing very soon down in Cannes, which is a sellout. And so the escape rooms were really fun. You get locked in a room and you've got to figure out all the little clues to escape. We did them down in Antibes and it was just a lot of fun. And it used part of the brain that we're not really used to using anymore. Um, Maths and enigmas and it was brilliant fun. Uh, Funny how intense one hour can be. Uh, Getting into the garden. Any form of creation basically is really important. So Mr. BB gets in the kitchen. He's been doing some woodwork. And these have been really good for the soul. Really fun soft play. As you know, I set up a mastermind. It was in December 2017. A group of women who are all running their own businesses and we've got together once a month and we've had six meetings now well in fact we've had more because what has happened what's evolved without any intention on my part or anyone's part is that we've been testing each other's products and services it's been a real um byproduct of this process so we went and did um, a workshop on being kind to yourself as a woman self-massage that kind of thing with Kate Threadgold. Then Vonnie Marshall Edwards, who runs singing classes, who you've probably seen on Facebook because she's had incredible success with her students winning The Voice Kids and being entered into The Voice Kids on TV. And even the Eurovision Song Contest, uh, she had someone in in that, that one of her, her singers 
Well, she offered to give my mastermind group a singing lesson. So out of my comfort zone. Um, I live in a very musical house, in fact. I didn't grow up in a musical house, per se. I didn't learn. All I could do was play green sleeves on the recorder. And I couldn't read music. I used to have to li- uh, write all the uh, music notes in and uh, cheat, basically, <laughs> because I couldn't read the music fast enough. It just didn't connect in my head. And then over the years, all my boyfriends seem to have been amazing singers. <laughs> they used to sort of serenade me as we go out on dates. And actually, that stopped me wanting to sing uh, because I didn't want to show myself up. So I went along to to Vonnie's singing class with tons of trepidation, if I'm honest. And she was just amazing. How, what she drew out of us and how she helped us find those different notes in class. Thinking about your diaphragm. I didn't even know I had one. And just uh, belting out a couple of songs using a microphone. I don't mind microphone for a podcast, but I've got to tell you, standing in front of other people and doing a song, that was woo out there on the Richter scale of scariness. But we liked it all so much. The adrenaline was so buzzing, we actually signed up for more singing lessons. Up next will be Faye Vialba, who I have spoken to several times on this podcast. She is going to be sharing her yoga with us. So we're going to get to test her method, the Scaravelli yoga, in our mastermind not again not something that i thought we would be doing and of course being flexible and bendy it is so important and it is on my to-do list to get even better at (laughs) even better at she says like she's very bendy already but hey it's on my to-do list to to do and i'm looking forward to ticking that off next week also started doing a little bit of meditation it is something i forget to do but i do realize it is really really important i downloaded the app deepak chopra and oprah have and it's been really, really great uh, just just to have that, that a couple of minutes away, really, to recharge. So that's what I've been focusing on is recharging my batteries. It's funny when you want to do something and I'm a firm believer in putting that idea out there, how things sort of come back to you. A friend of mine, David Johansson uh, in England, who I actually haven't seen for 20 plus years. We first met at Playgroup when we were about three or four years old, contacted me said that he'd seen a couple of videos online and maybe this podcast and he has a company called Juno Skincare. I'll put the details in the show notes. It's 100% natural and nearly 100% organic products that they've been running for a couple of years and he's looking at expanding down here in the south of France and would I like to have a go and test some of these products? And I was like, okay. So, kind of forgot about it. And then a week later, this gorgeous box came through with even more gorgeous products inside to try out. Well, I can't, but I actually look forward to cleaning my face at the end of the day. Is that a weird thing to say? Uh, It's so nourishing. It feels so good. And I have, and it smells so good. Everything about it was just amazing. So do go online and have a look at that. Juno Skincare. I definitely am going to be buying more because... It's just, you know, you've tried all the things through the years, Neil's Remedies and Neil's Yard and those kind of things. And this one ticks lots of my boxes, particularly at this age where I know I need to be looking after my skin if I don't want to look like an old hag in about five years time. (laughs) So again, I've been filling up my self-care bucket And of course, went to a wedding in England, Uh, not the wedding, but it was the wedding for us in my Anglo-Irish family. It was a real posh knees up and uh, it was a great to be back with the family. And the next day we got to watch the royal wedding, Um, not live live, but pretty live and be part of the vibe in the UK. So here's a little to do for you to do. Put something in your diary every week for your self-care. It is not an indulgence. It's so needed. And these days, when you meet anyone, um, I'm seeming to find more and more that we're, oh, I'm so busy. Oh, yeah, I had such a busy weekend. We're busy, busy, busy. It's sort of become quite fashionable. Well, let's change that fashion. Let's take it down a notch. Let's be unfashionably indulgent. Have a bath. Go to the Macon. Do you have a spa or to the Golden Tulip? And just enjoy yourself. Build some time in for you. So why have I been doing all this recharging? Well, I really needed to. I was running on vapors. I was empty. I was tired. And I needed to get my energy back because we are about to start work on Kidulam 2. Now, last year when I was in America on the business coaching and training uh, seminar that I was on with Biz Chicks, 
I decided that my word for 2018, I kind of prefer to do that than loads of resolutions because it's easier for me to remember, is going to, was going to be grow. So I wanted to grow personally and professionally. And these things have just kind of naturally happened. I've been to Red Tent Nights. Go and read the book Red Tent. It's amazing. And I've been to mindfulness activities, like I was saying earlier, yoga and meditation. But also professionally, I wanted to grow. As you may know, I won an award last year as Business Person of the Year, given to me by the Riviera Business Club. And it was a great honor and a huge surprise because I wasn't actually part of their network. And I don't even know who nominated me or put me forward. But it was a brilliant moment, brilliant timing, because it gave me visibility. And more importantly, it gave me confidence. Because mindset, when you want to grow, when you want to move your business from a hobby to a business, mindset is so important. Everyone gets these mindset issues, no matter at what stage you are in your business. And even though I had this little pebble on my desk that I brought back from California saying grow, I sometimes go, yes, I know I need to grow, but then I'd have that self-doubt. So I actually had a little bracelet made that said, believe on it. I am an ideas person, so there have been several ideas in the pipeline about growing. And one opportunity came up and I just thought, you know, I've got to seize this opportunity. Never mind how scary it is. And, you know, the financial impact of it and the workload that's going to come with it. But for many years, I've had this dream of creating a sort of one stop center, a friendly kind of learning space, a sort of just landed dot com where you just arrive in the south of France, get off the plane and you're like, wow, what do I do now? How do I find out about schools, about medical professionals? How do I make friends? How can I have some fun? So the first stage on that path really was to build Kiddoland as it is currently. And I had to do that alongside raising a family, a very busy family with two amazing kids, lots of different cats and rabbits and dogs and things like that. And we did a massive uh, renovation of a house, which is still (laughs) ongoing. And Kiddoland was born mainly aimed at the French But gradually, I'm seeing more and more internationals come to see us. And so we're starting to expand our timetable to include more things that are going to be good for them. So we've added in an Anglo club for bilingual speakers. We've got phonics. We are going to have a homework club for those that might be in an international school uh, but need a boost to do their homework. We've run many courses actually for adult development over the last couple of years because now that Kiddoland is up and running and has got an amazing team in place that I'm really confident can run without me I've been able to focus on things that were starting to interest me even more adult development so we ran painting workshops with Vizzi and Hein now you can hear them back in episode eight where they talk about their journey here to the south of France but they they do the painting on furniture It's just such a great course. You can go over and see them in Lourdes. We've done mastermind workshops, as you know, with people like Faye and Kate and Amanda Reyna, who does Pilates, Lee, who does fit nutrition, and uh, Tiff Butler, who does events. So we've all been getting together. It's been an amazing creative group, getting together um, and holding each other accountable, meeting up with each other once a month and sort of saying, what were the great wins? try and boost ourselves, motivate ourselves. But also last month you said you were going to do X, Y, and Z. Where are you on that? And it's been a great way for all of us to get traction on our businesses and change them from what could have been a hobby into a business. What else coming up soon at Kiddoland? We're going to be hosting a Gently to Sleep workshop with Louise. Well, she was in episode 38. Oh, I love that episode. I wish I had had her back in my life in those early days When the babes didn't settle at night, uh, she has an amazing calm influence. So that's on the 5th of June. And what I think is brilliant about that is it's going to be a great way for new mums to meet up with other mums. It is so important for them to meet up and be able to have a chat and share those experiences in those early days. Because it can be quite a lonely moment to be with your baby. Maybe husband or dad has gone back to work and you're up through the night. And it's great to connect with another mum. And of course, if you can get that baby to sleep so that you can get some sleep, then that's a win-win. And she's doing that workshop, I think it was 15 euros, it's really cheap. So 
check that out gently to sleep or email me info at kiddoland.com and I'll, I'll put you guys in touch because I think that would be a great way for you to start summer another event that we've got coming up it was first mentioned by Tiff Butler back a couple of episodes ago and also Kate Threadgold reminded me to get it organized was a book swap so we're coming into the summer lots of us will be going away on holiday or perhaps chilling out around a pool and I just thought it'd be great for us to use the space at Kiddoland to bring your books that you've really enjoyed, uh, not not the dullards that you'd uh, prefer to you know put in the bin, but the ones that you've enjoyed that you'd be happy to pass on or swap or exchange. You know, it's up to you how you want to do it if you want them back. We're doing that on Tuesday, the 19th of June, one till three in Kiddoland. You don't need to sign up, just pop along. I guess if we all turn up there at about one o'clock, maybe that's best rather than dribs and drabs, but it's entirely up to you. And coming up, we will be in September setting up more business workshops with uh, various people like Barbara Wilson, who I chatted to in episode 33. So I want Kiddoland and the space that we have there to now become a place that we can use for adults. And I'm really open to hear your ideas. You've probably got tons of ideas. So do get in touch with me and we can talk about putting something together. Now, of course, in order to do this, we needed more space because on Wednesdays, on Saturdays, in the school holidays, Kiddoland is at capacity and we can't fit any more people in. And after 11 years of watching your kids grow, well, we decided it was time for Kiddoland to grow. And so we are going to create this creative learning English academy, hopefully the best one that you'll find on the Cote d'Azur. So we're taking over another space where we can propose even more activities for you and for your family. We'll have a play and leisure zone. So that's going to be a dedicated area for the two to five year olds to play, to learn, to grow in the playgroup and the kindergarten programs. And then we're going to have a massive new airy sunny space. I think it's going to be about 70 meters squared. It's going to be perfect for birthday parties if we want to do events, if we need to do a theatre show for parents, if I want to run a nice biz with business networking event, we're going to be able to use it for sports, for leisure, and of course play. And it'll be also just off it with a breakout area for goûters, workshops. The world the is our oyster, basically. So once we've got that set up, and that should be hopefully really ready to go by the end of June, the existing space, which is right opposite where we currently run our Kiddoland activities, is also going to be having a makeover. So we're going to reorganise the rooms and the learning material to make a creative learning zone. So the focus here is going to be more on the primary, college and Lycian age children. Uh, so, so kids from about six years old up to teenagers and also adult workshops. That's what I'm really excited about focusing my energy on. We're going to have a music and filmmaking zone, a zen zone, so we can do mindfulness or yoga. We're going to have a studio, so a place for us to sort of share, learn and grow through fun workshops. And no idea is a silly idea at this point, so do get in contact with me if you've got a great idea, info at kiddoland.com. And we'll keep our cooking and creative zone. And we're going to add into there a constructive Lego corner, the Lego lab. So I'm really looking forward to having this amazing space that you know outside we've got easy parking Leclerc is a walk a little walk away it takes me about four minutes to walk to Leclerc so huge car park there and the idea is that this creative learning academy stays friendly it's accessible and it can serve children and adults so if you do have a family you can drop them off if you don't or even if you do come and do something for you too come and join a yoga class a pilates class so you don't have to have a family. You can bypass that, come and do some painting, business coaching. Why don't we do some chocolate tasting? Get into the book swaps. We'll have some activities will be paid and some will be free. We want this to be a community place, a place that rocks everyone's boat. Also, like I mentioned, we did stop doing the birthday parties before because the demands of Kiddoland became too much. I was doing everything from the marketing to the finance to the cleaning, sometimes teaching. And I had at home a young family and things were really too busy. I needed to pull back and spend time on my family. And we had bought a wreck of a house, needed renovating. 
And so that's why I've been focusing my attention on watching my own kids grow, but keeping things ticking over at Kiddoland and gradually get onboarding more and more people to take on the roles that I wasn't finding I had time to do. And the kids have grown. Now they're teenagers. They're entering a phase of out and about. To anyone that has teenagers, you know what that means. They sort of check in at mealtimes <laughs> and maybe for a quick hug, although that's not as much as it was before. Sub. But, you know, we still have a great relationship. I'm having a great time with them and it's a really great laugh. But I'm less needed and the house is getting there. It's uh, not such a building site as it was. So time for grow and I've got to believe that I can do it and I really hope that you're going to be supporting me and be alongside me through through this. I am so thankful and I have to do a big shout out here because I have been surrounded and supported by an amazing community on and offline. My family, Mr. BB, who backs all the mad ideas I have and I have a lot of mad ideas. I am a creative ideas person and I do have to go through and filter them out I don't implement all the mad ideas when we decide to run with an idea at that point Mark does pick up the home reins he gets stuck in the kitchen he takes the kids to orthodontist appointments or medical appointments and he really picks up the reins and I couldn't run Kiduland podcasts community groups online if I didn't have that support of a partner at home. And I've got to say, I have amazing teenagers, Daisy, who has, alongside the growth of Kiddoland, it's just been so fun to watch the kids grow because I've shared all the ups and the downs with them so that they sort of see what a business is about. So they are not shy in coming forward with their business advice. And I've got to say, it's really quite astute now it helps in our programs for Adoland, but even in practical organization things. Daisy's helping out with the design of the new space. So she's helping me uh, find new products, the lights, the fixtures, the fittings, that kind of thing, and designing how we're going to use it. And of course, she's always there with, with one of her fab hugs. Louis is tech master maestro. One of the byproducts of running Kiddoland and and being able to add in what we wanted, you know, back in the day it was Lego, so we used to buy tons and tons of Lego. Now he's going to be constructing all the Star Wars Lego for us so we can use it as models for the Lego Lab. He helps with these podcasts. He is now of an age where he's able to edit them for me. As you know, he does the jingles in, the jingles out. We've had so much fun working on that together. He's helped me with the YouTube channel, doing videos and of course that helps him with his own CV so it's a it's a win-win we're going to be putting a green room into Kiddoland I'll mention that a little bit later but we're going to be having a music area and be able to do vlogging and blogging and videos so it's great to have within my own family uh, the the resources and the skills to help grow Kiddoland into this learning center this academy that we want it to be my parents are down the road. I'm so lucky. It's an invaluable support. And it also means that if they get sick, I don't have to jump on a plane and get to England. And my sister is alongside another amazing businesswoman who runs a placement abroad company for 18s and overs, Pebbles.fr. Big shout out to you guys. Having that network, that family network right on hand is a godsend. And of course, I've got many friends who've been on this podcast and my masterminders, my fellow CEOs here and abroad in America who are there, you know, at a little touch of a button, uh, at a phone call, at a down the pub to sort of chat with about home life, about work life, about silly life, about soft play. And I've also had an amazing online community which I'm so grateful for. It's such a powerful, supportive community. Cot does your living. You can just put an idea out there, a request for information, and within a millisecond, people are coming back with help pointing you in the right direction. The Riviera Business Cocoon, again, a really nurturing, supportive, safe space for us to share anything business. And just on that note, I am opening up 
in June some spots for September mastermind class. So if you run your own business, maybe it's more of a hobby or it's just started out or it's fledgling and you want to take it to that next level, do get in contact with me either through the Riviera Business Cocoon or at info at kidalon.com and I'll tell you what, what's entailed, what's involved and it's once per month uh, meet up and it's great. It gives you great traction in your business. So all these ways of connecting with people, the community, mum and baby groups, the charity groups, well-being groups that I've been privileged to be part of over the last 11 years as Kidland has been growing. Well, it's not only been great from a business perspective, but it has been incredibly nurturing for the soul. And it's been incredibly enriching as well. And I can't wait for the second half of 2018 now to have you alongside me. I think we're going to have to have a little celebration when we open Kiddoland, uh, the second part, the play zone. And I look forward to inviting many of you to come along, have a look around and celebrate with me. And I really want this to become a space that's useful for all of us here on the Côte d'Azur the place that you are happy to recommend to your friend, to that person that you meet in the supermarket aisle who looks a bit lost because they've just arrived. So voila, keep following us. We've got the hashtag Kidoland is growing or Kidoland Grandi on Instagram, Twitter and on Facebook. And just uh, come along and, and share the journey with me online. Please do share this episode if you think there's someone out there that needs a little prompt in the self-care world or perhaps is holding back and needs to feel the fear and do it anyway to understand that there are other people out there feeling self-doubt like I have been over the last couple of months as we put this together it helps you to know that you're not alone perhaps they need to join one of our community groups Cut does your living the cocoon maybe you think they could do with joining a business mastermind you know, send them my way. Every extra person that listens to this podcast, and we see it on the stats as they rise. Well, I'm really thankful for that. And I really thank you for taking the time to listen and taking the time to share this on your Facebook or in an email. You could do it really easily from your phone. Um, Like it, subscribe to the channel. And above all, get in contact if you've got any great ideas for the Academy and how we can take this forward and make it a great space for everyone. Thanks for listening. Till the next time, au revoir les fireflies. The Riviera Firefly podcast appreciates every contributor and listener. Your comments, likes and shares make us really happy and inspire us to keep doing the shows. Come join us in our free community groups on Facebook, Côte d'Azur Living, for all things south of France. And for those running a business, you need to join the Riviera Firefly Business Cocoon. It's totally free. The costs of producing and hosting this podcast are funded by Kiddoland. Nicknamed by their clients, The Little English School, they organise fun activities all in English for 0 to 16 year olds from baby clubs and playgroups to English lessons and holiday camps. They even hold workshops for adults too, right here on the Côte d'Azur. You can find out more about Kiddoland directly on their website www.kiddoland.com. So thanks for listening. Please do pay it forward and share an episode so we can spread the cut as your love. Until next time, Fireflies, au revoir.